Such a shame Emily couldn't make it. She probably knows him better than any of us. Don't underestimate the impact that you had on his life. So lucky to have found love and companionship. Badminton. Badminton? Lawrence. He was very good. Oh, yes, darling. I used to play him every morning. I can still picture him sauntering past the breakfast bar, shuttle cock in hand. Oh, I wish I brought a bottle of water now. I, I think it's the donuts. They overheat my ears. Why are you dressed like that anyway? I mean, um, is it a religious thing or are you going to a fancy dress party after? Princess Leia. Nope. It has a special significance for Norris. I mean, he will know. No, he won't. He's dead. Oh, goody, he found it. A hip flask? In church? It's just in case of shock. Well, I'd better up one, then. Oh. That's not brandy. No, tequila. I was out of brandy. Thank you. <coughs> Much better. Should she be drinking that on top of the pill again? I don't know again. I'm not a doctor. Well, what was it? Something I found in the bottom of my handbag when she was going haywire in the pub. So it was uh, either a paracetamol or codeine, if she were lucky. <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> oh, well, you see, so there you go, it's worked. Um, once again, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss, Frida. How are you holding up? Makes it easier being surrounded by all his friends. Haven't seen Gemma? No. I hoped that she would turn up, but <clears throat> However angry she is with me, for Norris. Oh, well, come on, Gemma can be a bit mardy, so don't let it spoil your day, sweetheart. Hello, everyone. It is so nice to see so many of you here today. Now, he wasn't a very religious man, so he's left instructions for today's service. Quite specific instructions. So if you'd all like to stand, we can sing together. No, this is first choice. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. And I know Norris would be thrilled to know so many of his friends turned up. Well, we're here today to celebrate his life and remember him. Because if you met him, you'd never forget him. <laughs> when I first met Norris, I thought he was very rude and very arrogant and self-opinionated. And he was. Well. Not many years later, there he is. Before you could say Weatherfield Gazette, at the side of me, behind the counter, in the cabin. And there followed many wonderful years. Ups and downs and sparkles and tempers. At least once a week, I threatened to kill him. But we got through, because he had a great sense of humor. And he made me laugh. But the measure of a man is when things go wrong. And they did for me a few years ago. I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And Norris, aid just came into his own. Drove me to the doctor, drove me to the hospital on the day I was having the operation. And he never left. And when I woke up, Norris is there. I was swathed in bandages and looking very poorly. He was sat eating the grapes he'd bought for me. And then he said, you look better already. A little smile under those conditions goes a long way. But what I'm really saying is, if it wasn't for Norris Cole, 
I don't think I'd be here. He was a one-off, you know. He was a very old-fashioned man. He loved old-fashioned things, like decency, honesty, respect for other people. And I shall miss him. Goodbye, old friend. And finally, we have one more person speaking. Now, this may be a little unorthodox, especially as Norris wanted it to be a surprise. He wrote a letter, his final words, and he wanted it read by a person that I, I think I can say without fear of contradiction, is one of the true pillars of our little community. A man that we all love and trust very much. Roy. Well, I, 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 I just read it. We want it. <clears throat> right. Um. Hello, all. I hope you are all having a lovely day. Uh, don't let the fact that I'm dead spoil it. I'm very much like Eva Peron in that respect. Don't cry for me, Argentina. I really did have the most wonderful life, friends, a community. Some people I didn't care for, obviously. But in the newsagent game, that's factored in. I have jotted down a few ideas so I don't leave anyone out. First donkey out of the gate, Frida. We had some fun, didn't we? Yeah, we did. These twilight years with you are very special to me. I probably should have told you that more while I was alive. Yeah, just once would have been nice. In fact, it was you who gave me this idea. You were always badgering me about what I'd like at my funeral eulogies and songs and what not. Uh, morbid, I call it. Anyway, I won't be there, will I? So what's the point of playing my favourite songs? So instead, I picked a few I can't stand. Safe in the knowledge that I won't have to hear them ever again. Enjoy. Dear Mary, I will miss you very much. Oh, Norris, stroke Roy. No. Mary, Mary, do you want another tablet, no. sweetheart? No, she doesn't. You were another one who never stopped badgering me about what kind of funeral I wanted. I remember once when you were in full flow. Just to shut you up, I said I didn't care what my funeral was like as long as you attended in your Princess Leia outfit. But even you're not daft enough to fall for that. To all my friends on the street, thank you. At least to those who've bothered to show up. So here's to you, my neighbours, my friends. Here's to you, lovey. Here's to you. Can't take that to the grave. The paper boy, the one outside the shop, there's something inside, something hidden, something precious. Oh, it's like Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah, the Ark of the Covenant is hidden in the paper boy. It's too bulky for a start. And, and now that's got you wondering, 
My last word has to go to Rita. If you're still kicking about, you really were the sunshine of my life. Another song I can't stand. You were the best friend I ever had. I'm so glad we stayed so close. Oh, so am I. <laughs> because if Sleepless in Seattle taught us anything, yes, Frida's got me into rom-coms, it can be very difficult steering that steady course between friendship and sexual tension that always exists between man and woman. What? Especially when they work so closely together, toiling in the trenches, cheek by jowl, day after day. That's a sweet shot, not the Western Front. Shh, man. And <clears throat> though we never made that final leap. What final leap? It's Red Room. <laughs> Ladies, please. I still spent some of the happiest years of my life with you. You made my life better, Rita, and I thank you for it. And just for that, I will take one secret to the grave with me. I swear I will never tell another soul that you used to go to Claudia to get your colour done. And, uh, that's it. You told me she did it herself. Oh, man. Oh, Claudia, I did expect it from you. But Rita... Audrey, for goodness sake, remember where you are. You! Oh, thank you so much for ruining my day. Oh, no. Oh, don't mind me. Now, if you'd all like to stand to sing, Norris's next choice. <laughs>